Welcome to Beholds. I'm Beth Whitney, and I'm here today with my co-host, Craig Hardinger, and we are going to talk about something that you might find interesting. We're going to talk about some strengths and weaknesses of our church. This came from a question that someone submitted to our Ask Me Anything Sunday, and we just kind of riffed on it. And uh, for me, it was a great exercise because it helped me think about uh, things to give God thanks for, be grateful for, but also some things that we can work on as a staff and as a congregation, things that we can pray for. So give it a listen. Let us know what you think in the comments. Here we go. Hey, Craig. Good morning. How's it going? All right. Doing okay. You ready for this episode? I am. I'm, I'm, I've been looking forward to this. Mm-hmm. I'm a little curious. Yeah, because you've written some things uh-huh. down, I've written some mm-hmm. things down, but we don't know what we wrote down. So it'll be an intervention for both of us. It probably will be. It'll yeah. be interesting. How odd would it be if everything we wrote was the same? That Which would it be could, really... There could be, yeah, there yeah. could be some things. Yep. There. But before we do that... Yes. Um, the ministry that you head up here at RK Church mm-hmm. is extreme... A, a lot of... A lot of programs in a church they mm-hmm. kind of dwindle. Yes, summertime. Yep, and rightly so. Everybody needs a rest. Yes, you know, kind of thing. Uh, yours does not. Yours, your, your ministry amps up. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Beth is the director over um, high school, middle school, and children's ministries, and she's gotten this incredible team. The best of people. No offense. Um, and uh, you guys are going to be busy, busy, busy. Can you just take a couple of minutes? Because even, even if you don't go to arcade, mm-hmm. um, this is a great time to encourage your your family ministries department, the Absolutely. youth youth mm-hmm. workers, the volunteers. Uh, if you have directors and pastors involved, if you use those labels, then then in, go out of your way to encourage them, mm-hmm. especially if you have young children or teenage children, yep. to just thank them because uh, while you're vacationing on summertime. They're laboring. They're working hard to get the gospel out to young people. So, what's happening in family ministries? Because it's it's a lot. We we call it like the pedal to the metal season. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yes, Easter's coming, and we're like, yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we're like, okay, Easter's over, go. Yeah, I mean that's that's really yeah. how we operate. Yeah. So here's what's coming: our high school and middle school will go to camp. Mm-hmm. We will have kids camp, which is for you know, elementary and preschoolers. Mm -hmm. Um, Something we're super excited, we've never done this before. We have a team of young people from EV Free LA coming on a missions trip to Arcade Church to serve at kids. Is that where Tom and Shannon used to attend before they came there? It is. Oh, very cool. It's also where our high schoolers go and do mission trip. Okay. So it's like this great bridge building. Yeah. Yeah. also, it tells people who come from a poorer neighborhood that they're important and they can serve, yeah, yeah. but also tells us who are you know, a larger, more well-to-do church that we can learn and need yep. the global church. That's so cool. So that's happening. Yeah. Right now, we're actually recording this while our middle schoolers are doing Stay to Serve. Mm-hmm. Um, then the high schools will go, they run VBS at EV Free. So they take our, they take our curriculum. Okay. They, Which you you and your team you write we do we used to buy a curriculum yes and I think you just got so disenchanted with a lot of the curriculum that's out there and we'd have to rewrite half the stuff anyway yeah and so you said we've got we've got the people and you this is the second year you've done yeah. this yeah, yeah. last year was amazing it was so it was great. absolutely cool yeah so it was good so we're doing that again yeah um, and so then the high schools will take that down to L A run VBS for a week do mm-hmm. other you mm-hmm. know they go to the park and meet people all of that kind of stuff. But then outside of my ministry, our college group is going to serve in San Quentin in Mexico on a missions trip. So Are they with Jim and Annie Cole? They will be serving with a team that serves with Jim and Annie. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. I think that they'll see Jim and Annie, but um, yeah. it's yeah. beyond that. Yeah. Do we need to pause for a sec? No, sorry. Okay. You're fine. Okay. Um, so I know... There's a lot of stats and info about young people leaving the church, Mm -hmm. and our heart aches for that, and we want to do what we can to help young people be strong in their faith. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you, young people are on fire for Jesus. It 
to the I agree to the point where as an older Christian, I'm jealous of that. Yeah. I'm yeah. jealous of that fire. Yeah. Is I remember what that's like. Mm-hmm. And and I am so encouraged by what's mm-hmm. happening in your family ministry yeah. because top to bottom, I mean, five year olds are serving, eight year olds mm-hmm. are serving, twelve year olds are serving, seventeen, eighteen year olds are serving. Yeah. And and so often I know your generation and my generation, even though we're different generations, it was we've got to serve our kids, serve our kids, serve mm-hmm. our kids, serve our kids. And then they come, they grow up to be adults, and guess what? They expect to be served. Right. And that's not happening here. Mm-mm. And I pray it doesn't happen in your fellowship. Those children, if they've come to Christ, find a place for them to serve and to impact mm-hmm. and volunteer mm-hmm. to, to do something for the sake of the kingdom, right. not for their own sake. And you guys are doing You're always looking for ways to do that. We, we are, and it's so awesome. Like, how awesome to see yeah. disciple-making happen at such a little young yeah. age. Yep. So it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, it is. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, we have a fun topic today. Yeah. It's born out of one of the questions. Yes. Of Ask Me Anything. Yes. Mm-hmm. But we've kind of um, made it our own. Yeah. Right. So the question is... What is the number one strength you see that the arcade body possesses? What do you see as its number one weakness? Mm-hmm. We picked five strengths mm-hmm. and five weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And if you're not from arcade, don't go anywhere. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, this would be a great exercise for you and your church, mm-hmm. uh, I think. Right. Yeah, and, and, we, and we have not talked about what we wrote. No. And so I'll... Beth will give her answers, and then I will give what we call the right answers. No? I'll give answers on strengths. These are just opinions. Yes. Yeah. So... And and let's face it. I mean, we'll get to the weaknesses part. Most of us, most members and staff workers Mm -hmm. of a local church, they really accent what we're not doing well. Mm -hmm. We are reminded continually... Uh, by good and godly, wonderful, gentle people, what we what we don't have, what we don't do well, what mm-hmm. is not effective, mm-hmm. um, and we'll talk about those things mm-hmm. because those things are honest about the church. Right. But it was fun for me to just write down some strengths. Yep. That are arcade. Spe- mm-hmm. I believe arcade specific, mm-hmm. but also uh, so many other churches have these same yep. strengths. You know, it's not just ours. So do you want to do tag team alternate? Yep. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was one, two, three, shoot. Oh, it's too bad. I'm paper. Okay, fine. Okay. Go. Okay. Doesn't know how to play Rochambeau. Uh, I, don't, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know if these are in order of priority. Did you rank yours? No. Okay, I didn't. Okay. Um, I was, if there's a number one, this would be the number one. This is a strength of our, I, I believe, our K Church. Resolved commitment among the congregation to the word of God and to the gospel. Oh, Nice. There is a resolved, I mean, there is a non-negotiable commitment, hmm. which I know is a, a lot of churches, but we also know it's not a lot of churches. Right. And the thing that I love about Arcade that drew Debbie and me to Arcade years ago was this resolve of this commitment to the authority and the mm-hmm. sufficiency mm-hmm. of the Word of God mm-hmm. and the gospel. Right. Yeah. That yeah. hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't gone no. anywhere. And it, Lord willing, it won't. Okay. I think thought that our preaching team mm. is a strength. Good. And part Good. of that is your willingness and leadership to let the younger guys preach. Mm-hmm. I know there's a lot of pastors who are, you know, on the tail end of their career who are happy to just do it all. Mm-hmm. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. What do you mean by that, Beth? Tail end of the... I want to just land on tail end of the career. What do you mean by that? Craig, you've been in ministry for 40 I years. Know, I know. That's I know. amazing. I am on the back nine, that's for sure. But Right. Yeah. So, yeah. But to give others the opportunity mm-hmm. to hone their... Like, no offense, other guys, you're not as good as Craig. Craig has way oh, more practice. Be. No, just, it's my turn to talk. All right. Craig has way more practice, right? He's crafted more sermons than all of the pastors mm-hmm. put together. Mm-hmm. But you, you leave space for growth. And also, you 
train and encourage and help the pastors get better. Mm -hmm. And that helps. I mean, how great is it that we get to hear from Cole, who has a metaphor that... Of everything. Of everything. Yeah. And stretches our yeah. imagination. How mm-hmm. great that we get to hear from Nick, who yeah. always has a great story and is able to connect it right back to the gospel, yeah. and on yeah. and on and on yeah. and on. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think our preaching team is one oh, of our strengths. Thank you. It's very kind. I appreciate that. Um, the second strength that I think that we have is, and I've never experienced this in all okay. the years of growing up in a church and being a pastor of a church, congregational singing. Oh, our people can belt it. Yeah, they can. <laughs> they can. I mean, I, I comment on a Sunday, but that, that to me, that's a typical Sunday. But um, and that's due in large part to Chris Vaughn's leadership, mm-hmm. but the team that he mm-hmm. puts on the platform with the choir, the orchestra, the band. Um, I have never been part of a congregation that has the volume of singing. And I, I know that everybody has a point of view on songs, on style of music. What? I, I know. I know. It's weird to think, but everybody has an opinion on that. But I'm, I'm not hearing those opinions by, by volume. Mm-hmm. And let's face it, sometimes people vote with volume. Right. And if I love a song, I'm going to belt it. If I don't love a song, I may not sing. Right. Um, there are songs that, that Chris leads us in that I don't really appreciate, but because he's my he's my pastor, he's my worship mm-hmm. pastor. I'm going to follow him, and if he wants me to sing this, you know what? I'm going to sing it. Yep. And more often than not, a song that I don't like initially, I end up like grows on you. Yeah, yeah. It grows on me. You and find yourself humming it through. Yeah, the, week the, or the lyrics, the melody, whatever. It really just it just grows on me to the point where I really want to sing, mm-hmm. and uh, because I have a weak vocal cord, I, I can't sing as loud as I'd like. Right. Well, you have to preach. Because uh, I'm going to so preach. Yeah. And um, I, I, Sunday, I just I just clammed up. I bowed my head, and I just listened to the people of God. It was incredible, mm-hmm. incredible. And that's 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 normal yeah. for us. Yeah. I love that. It wasn't like a special Sunday. It wasn't a special Sunday, no. Speaking of opinions, I heard someone say once that when you're the object of the worship, you can decide what the music sounds like. <laughs> I was like, ooh, I'm convicted. Yeah, I gotta, I'm going to write that ooh. one down. That's good. I'm not the object of the worship, so <laughs> it's not about me. Um, okay, not to toot my own horn, mm-hmm. but I believe the family ministry team and people is a strength of our key church. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree 100%. We have Yelena in the nursery and preschool who is, she's this perfect combination of firm and loving, like... Mm-hmm. If you're a young mom and you come to Arcade Church, you need to hang around Yelena. Because if, yeah. if I had to do life all over, if I could rewind and be a young mom and have Yelena be my mentor, I would. Yeah, like, yeah. And then the way that Nick and Andrew are pouring into their students, the Nick is high God. school, Andrew yes. is middle, middle school. school. Yeah. These kids are growing up knowing and loving God's word, each other, mm-hmm. Jesus, um, and the volunteers are amazing, and it's just God has really blessed us yes. with um, these people, and and a time of fruitfulness. We mm-hmm. know that's not oh we're amazing, and so mm-hmm. look at all these results. It's God's work is producing this amazing mm-hmm. fruit, and I really think that was one of mine. Uh, yes. it, it, it wasn't the next one down, but I'm, I'm just going to piggyback okay. off of that and just use it. Okay. Um, because I agree, I, I think that, and what I the, what I wrote on mine is fruit bearing family ministries, mm-hmm. um, because that's what we're aiming for yeah. is is the is the spirit born fruit that come from seeking Jesus, and I see that over and over and over again. And you were kind to me, so it's my turn to be kind to you. Uh, many of you don't know this, but uh, Beth is somewhat of a, a pioneer mm-hmm. at Arcade Church in the sense that. You started when we when Debbie and I moved here. You were down at Del Norte. You yep. were childcare. Yep. And doing a great job establishing all kinds of relationships with young moms, primarily, and um, just doing a great job. You left that, and then you came on this campus as an administrative assistant, mm-hmm. um, a secretary. Yeah. And that was ten years ago, I think, mm-hmm. almost eleven. Mm-hmm. 
that you came on, and now you are director of a pivotal, pivotal ministry. Just because throughout those years, everybody, it was very plain to everybody, the congregation, anything, it's just, this is a leader who needs to lead. Mm -hmm. And that's what we found out with Beth. And so when she took the role of children's director and then subsequently director of family ministries, um, I've made a lot of bad decisions in ministry. That was not one of them. Mm -hmm. And and the elders were very supportive of it. I'm very grateful for that. And the staff, and your staff, they would take a bullet for you. They really would. But that's... But that's what I love about Family Ministries is an incredible commitment to the authority of the Word of God. And the thing I love about what you what you are training your team and they're catching on is, yes, we want to disciple these children, but we also want to come alongside parents yep. and support them. Yep. And that's what I see top to bottom from the cradle to graduation of high school is, mom and dad, you're not alone. Because mm-hmm. most of you, you've never had a 16-year-old before. Yeah. You've never had a two-year-old before. Yeah. Um, you've never had three kids before right. or whatever. Right. And all of a sudden, you've got the, these incredible people who are wonderful resources. Yeah. So I do think that's a strength. I, I put family ministries uh, down here too. Well, and again, God's grace to us yep. Is, yep. That's right. is all it, yep. it is. And thank you. Thank you, God. Keep it coming. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, okay. So I, because I'm in part of this, I put women's ministry yeah, okay. Um, so I'm good friends with your wife, Debbie, mm-hmm. who is leading women's ministry. Sometimes that's a problem. Uh, f- well, if you just get your act together, I know. it wouldn't be I a know. problem. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we... Uh, never mind. Gang up. We get after you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the love of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> a lot of churches have relegated women's ministry to crafts. Oh. And Proverbs 31, right? Yeah. And if that's your church, let me challenge you. Mm-hmm. Women love the Word of God. Serious, serious Bible students. Yes. Yeah. And if these women are in the workplace and are raising children and are going to college and are in their neighborhood mm-hmm. and on and on and on... Mm-hmm. They need to be equipped yeah. with the Word of God to give answers, right? To That's share right. their testimony, to um, challenge maybe what their child's learning at school, or to be a woman of integrity at her job, yeah. on and on yeah. and on. And um, Debbie, I know, has been really pivotal pivotal in this. Also, Sonia Warner back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, women's ministry is serious. Yeah, It's not that we don't have fun. We have a blast. But... God's word and growing as women, as disciples, yeah. as apprentices of Jesus, yeah. is like number one. Mm-hmm. And if there's a craft, great, but that's not... That's not the drive. No. Yeah. It's Jesus. Yeah. Jesus and his word. Yeah. So I think that's a Good. I'm, I'm sure that Debbie will be encouraged by that. Good. Um, are we? Is this the third one? Yes. Okay. Uh, flexible to... Uh, the, the, I'm thinking of the congregation at okay. large. Flexible to a missional mindset. Say more. You know, when when this church was planted in 1950, Mm -hmm. um, this was rural Sacramento. And over the years, the neighborhood was built up primarily of younger families, gentrification moved in, uh, ethnicities moved Mm -hmm. in. um, And and at every change, and this is even before you and me got Mm -hmm. here, at every, at every change of the demographics of our neighborhood, the people adapted. The mm-hmm. people of Arcade adapted to the circumstances. For example, right now, we've got a very large uh, Afghani population. Mm-hmm. And so we've got people that are continually praying and thinking about, okay, how do we... They're here, and God brought them here, mm-hmm. and so how do we do this? Years ago, 16, 17 years ago, the church had the vision of buying Del Norte, yep. which is an athletic center, a tennis Kind of tennis club? Yeah. Tennis club that you used to work at, Mm -hmm. um, just a block away. And it's got tennis courts, pickleball courts, weight room, two pools. All it's it's a typical neighborhood fitness center. And we bought that with the intent to be missional, to care for neighbors that would never come on the campus Mm -hmm. of Arcade Church. And through Taylor Clifton's leadership, Mm -hmm. we'll probably have her on an episode one of these days. 
Um, it has become this mission mission field that once again, Arcadians, we just adapt to it. Yep. And I love that. And that doesn't that doesn't come from the front. Right. Um, that that is naturally inborn in the lives of the the congregation. Mm-hmm. Is that when something happens? Oh no, change! Wow, that's too bad. But rather, okay, well, how do we got to pivot? Mm-hmm. How do we need to pivot with this? And that, that is an absolute strength that Arcade has, and I, I pray other churches as well has that. Um, I think of Kelly Frazier, who is involved with member care and Rooted, mm-hmm. and Rooted has this is this pipeline of ministry for people who come in the front door, and they come in as evaluators, but then all of a sudden they get involved as members, mm-hmm. and she has just got this incredible pipeline of ministry and service that does well, that that allows people to be flexible mm-hmm. in how they want to be witnesses for Christ. In fact, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it was that person that asked the question from the previous episode oh. on testimony. Okay. Is that they see the need, they're convicted, they want to witness, mm-hmm. they want people to come to Christ, how do I do that? Yeah. And those are the, that's normal for Arcade, mm-hmm. and I love that. That's before I got here, probably before you got yep, here. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, but I, I, I love writing on the tales of that. All right. I think a strength is our intergenerational congregation. Did, did you copy? No. Did you, did you, did you copy? Get on, did you get on my... Craig? Com- All right. Go on, talk. Go on. You have that one too? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, uh, just, I'll, I'll build on it, whatever okay. you say. Yeah. So we have obviously a lot of young families, a mm-hmm. lot of babies. Um, we have a lot of senior saints. Yeah, we do. And there's a lot of crossover. Yeah. In fact, we have we have Generation Sunday coming up in mm-hmm. June. Yeah. And we're going to record some stories of these intergenerational oh, that's cool. relationships where there's people who are in their 50s serving with middle school, and uh-huh. there's you know young people that come on Monday morning with the volunteers who are all you know retired guys right. or retired women or whatever, and so these cross generational intergenerational relationships that. There's, you know, there's a woman, her name's Pat Graves. Yeah. She gives the best hugs. She's an incredible woman. Yeah. So I, and she's older, she's, yeah. she's older than you. Yeah. She, she might be in the next generation mm-hmm. above, I don't mm-hmm. know. But every Sunday that I do see her, I want a hug. I don't know if she wants a hug for me, but I want a hug for yeah. Pat. Yeah. And to just have these, these senior saints that, that care there's people who are like, I pray for you every single day. Oh my mm. gosh. Thank you. That's like huge. it, it is makes is you huge. weep, yeah. you know, with yeah. joy and gratitude, yeah. knowing that there's people who are, you know, 20, 30, 40 years older and are mm-hmm. on their knees to Jesus on behalf of me and yeah. the things that I'm involved in here. Yeah. So I, I want to piggyback off of the generational aspect because I agree, is that is that that is something that um, we've always enjoyed here at Arcade mm-hmm. Church, but COVID did us a favor. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, first of all, we lost a lot of people. It was sad. I mean, a lot of people did. Uh, we, we did lose some mm-hmm. to death mm-hmm. o- over COVID. I think we lost two or three members from COVID, but a lot of people left the church mm-hmm. because they didn't like how we addressed it. Mm-hmm. And so they went to a church where they thought was addressing the issue better than we were. Right. And because uh, before that happened, I think we were at about 12, 13, 1400 mm-hmm. uh, before COVID, two services, mm-hmm. one contemporary, one traditional. Mm-hmm. And then about oh, over half left, mm-hmm. over half left, and, and they haven't come back. Um, but we've grown and grown and mm-hmm. grown. But one of the things that we determined to do is we're not going to go back to two services. Mm-hmm. We're not going to do a contemporary, mm-hmm. traditional. Mm-hmm. And another thing we did is, is and this was... I was kind of stubborn about this. I want the middle schoolers and the high schoolers in with the general congregation Mm -hmm. because historically we've separated them. Right. And so they would never darken the doorway Mm -hmm. or rub elbows with a Pat Graves. Right. They would never do that because they're off on their own little Mm -hmm. department, Mm -hmm. their own little room. We refuse to do that, and your department was so supportive of that because you caught some flack. Yeah. Um. But the beautiful thing about that is that the entire congregation of arcades, save maybe the, the toddlers and the babies, mm-hmm. are in the same room, singing the same mm-hmm. songs, opening the same Bibles, listening to the same message. And uh, are, are, people, are young people bored? Well, probably. But 
hopefully they are there to be able to see that they are a part of something much bigger and the people that they're part of don't look like them. Right. And they may not dress like them. Mm -hmm. They may not act like them. And my concern of a lot of churches is they're going and splitting up the generations Mm -hmm. and they're just creating another generation of consumers. Yeah. And so with that multiple generation, I think of, of Cole with the gather groups. And you mentioned the women's ministry. I'll mm-hmm. now mention Tom with the men's ministry mm-hmm. that he began. Uh, it's the same thing, is that we are seeing young men and older men together in the same room, around the same table, mm-hmm. eating the same beans and bean dip, and talking about Jesus. Right. And there is incredible va- disciple value in that, mm-hmm. that I think the American church has lost. Yeah. And and we want to own, uh, uh, own that as best we can. Now... Mm-hmm. Sometimes when you have an intergenerational church, there might be frustrations. Yeah. Right? If you are a younger person, you might wonder why that person's always sitting in the same spot. Yeah. Right? <laughs> or or moving so slow up the aisle yeah, or, yeah, you know. Yeah. If you're an older person, maybe you're a little frustrated because the young person next to you draws pictures in their Bible, mm-hmm. right? Or takes notes differently than you ever would mm-hmm. or is on their phone during church. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of grace that has to be extended to be, yeah. across the board, mm-hmm. youngest to oldest and everyone in between. Yeah. Um, but also that is a part of becoming more like Jesus. Yeah. So yeah. it's good for us. Yeah. And too, I, I love, for example, on Baptism Sundays, which we do once a month, mm-hmm. is you bring... Third, all, through, third through fifth. Third, oh, third mm-hmm. through fifth. Mm-hmm. You bring those kids in... Yep. And if you've never been to Arcade, the way that we do baptism is uh, we have a tank that's on the platform full of water, and whoever's getting baptized, a family member or close friends or gather group can come up on the platform and just celebrate with that loved one. And uh, I mean, it's a powerful... It's so amazing. ...powerful experience. Mm -hmm. And whenever there's a young person getting baptized, Beth brings all of these kids up onto the platform, and every single time, Beth, even though it's been going on for a couple of years, every single time I tear up, hmm. because this is these kids are not the future of the church, they're the presence yep. of the church, yep. and they are engaged, and they are involved in, in, in watching someone follow the Lord and believe our baptism, and so we're, all, we're still looking for ways yep. to, to meld these generations together, but I think it's a strength that we can enjoy. Yeah. Yep. Well, even, you know... We usually block off the rows when the kids are going to come. Right, yeah. And one Sunday, I was homesick or something, and it just didn't happen. And uh, one of our friends, Jen, texted me and was like, I love that you had the kids just come and sit among us. And I was like, what are you talking about? It was a mistake. I didn't know that, yeah. But the response wasn't, what are you doing here? It was like, oh, awesome. I'm so glad you're here, which I love. Like, that's that's a joy of the intergenerational. Yeah, it is. All right, last positive okay. that I have on my list. It yeah. doesn't mean last right. positive. Um, we have a leadership, both you and the elders, that listen and say yes. Mm. Um, if you were at our E4 conference, I test high on apostle, mm-hmm. which means I have a lot of ideas. Your eyes are always on the horizon. Always on the horizon. I'm thinking, what else can we do? What can we do next? How can we do that better? Da, 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 all mm-hmm. these things. And to have someone like you listen to my <laughs> crazy idea and be like, well, sure, mm-hmm. try that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. And yeah. so there's been a lot of, I mean, the catechism book and even the podcast, like to have leadership that is willing to take a risk because there are a lot of risks of trying new things. There and are, yeah. it's great to have the freedom of knowing we can try new things. And if it doesn't quite go well? Well, we failed in the direction of Jesus, yeah. and that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And and it's easy to say yes when you have the right people, hmm. you know, and, and that that's what that's what makes it so wonderful. And to piggyback off of that, too, because I have that, is, um, and you know this as well, we've got, we have always had an incredible elder board yeah. that is, that they flinch to support mm-hmm. and defend mm-hmm. sometimes. Mm-hmm. And um, and so I'm eternally grateful for these these men who serve on this board um, because they're faithful to Arcade, they're faithful to their families, they're mm-hmm. faithful in ministry, 
they they love the mission and um, they're they're wonderful. So they they have given me permission to try new things as yeah. well. And, uh, and there's so, so much freedom in that, there's a lot right? of freedom. There's a lot of freedom, and there's and the pressure to fail is not accompanied with that, right? You know, okay, like I I love how you said that. I never heard that before. Mm-hmm. We fail in the direction of Jesus. I love that. I thought of that. Huh? I thought of that. Really? Yeah. I think you need to do something with that. Because I thought it was <laughs> Tweet good. Tweet it. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, think about it. Like, because I'm willing to, because I have this apostle bent, I'm willing to take risks. Yeah. I, I ask myself, well, what's the worst that can happen? Okay. What's so exactly? What is the worst that can happen? We, f- is it... we fail towards Jesus. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Let's try it. Yeah. And then it may blow your mind about yeah. the fruit that comes from yeah. those. Absolutely. All right. Now, I'm an eternal optimist, so thinking about the weakness of RK Church wasn't my favorite. Yeah. It was a good exercise. It was a good exercise Uh because it could be like, oh, that's an area that we need to grow in Mm -hmm. or maybe make Mm -hmm. some changes, Mm -hmm. which I love. Um, Speaking of apostles. um, (laughs) But are you ready? Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you can go first. Okay. I think one of our weaknesses is sometimes we look back with longing. Hmm. The glory days, yeah. the good old days, how things used to be. We mm-hmm. used to, we used to do this, or we used to have this, or we used to, used to, used to. It makes it tough. Yeah. Right. Because mm-hmm. yes, we used to do a lot of things that were amazing and bore a lot of fruit. But one of our team commandments is finish what you start or stop on purpose. Mm-hmm. And a lot of things we've stopped on purpose because sometimes things have run their course mm-hmm. or times have changed, yeah. um, our audience has changed, or how we should be going about doing things has yeah. changed. Our So one of our key family ministries team values is, um, wow, unity, hospital, innovation, mm-hmm. innovation. Oh, yeah. And the tagline is changing methods, unchanging message. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes it's easy to not want to change. Yeah. And so I think that that can be a little bit of a weakness is... I agree. I, good I, old I, days are behind us. Yeah, I think that, you know, the, the in fact, the way we set E4 conference is that we get in this trap of thinking that our memories are bigger than our dreams. Yeah. And and I understand that. I'm on, I'm on the old side. And so I look back at the way we used to do things. Mm-hmm. And we think, man, that was so wonderful. But what I forget, I remember the wonderful things, but what I forget is the intense struggle even back then. Mm-hmm. And so it, it was never as rosy as I thought it right, was. Right, right. And, um, and so one of the things that I love about Arcade, we're talking about weaknesses, but I agree that that can be a weakness, is, is that we've got a bunch of dreamers, a mm-hmm. bunch of apostles mm-hmm. that, that help those of us who are not keep our eyes off of the past longingly, but rather look with faith towards the future. Mm-hmm. And that, that is something I don't flinch at. Mm-hmm. And you do, and so yeah. it's been very helpful. We've got other people on staff that helped me with that, and I married someone like yeah. that as well, and that was very helpful. Okay, for me, um, uh, tired and congested facilities. Oh. You um, mean like the 100 building? Yeah, I, I think, uh, and really through the leadership of Brian and Taylor Clifton, mm-hmm. we have had this incredible facelift mm-hmm. of Del Norte and... Um, and this campus, yep. the church campus. I mean, because of their leadership and their vision, we have really benefited um, with just, you know, paint paint jobs, mm-hmm. you know, repairs, renovation. But I'm thinking specifically the family mm-hmm. ministries is you're outgrowing where you're at. Yeah. And so we have to come to the... Do we, do we renovate that? Which we did about seven years yeah. ago, which was putting lipstick on a pig. Yeah. Um, because it's just the building cannot sustain the amount of kids that we have coming. Well, and not only that, so if you don't know, the original sanctuary mm-hmm. is the kids' building. Yeah. yeah. So Arcade started in 1950? 1950. Yeah. It's an, it's it's an old, old building. Bu- it's yeah. it's mm-hmm. been used hard. I mean, yeah. whew. Yeah. And so, I, you know, and, and the elders and, and staff uh, were thinking of some solutions that... Lord willing, will happen, and yeah. probably by the time this drops, uh, the vision will have been cast right. about what to do. But, but that is a weakness: is when a family mm-hmm. comes on our campus, they see loving people. Mm-hmm. I mean, loving yep. people, but tired facilities, mm-hmm. tired facilities. Yeah. 
So something's got to break there. Yeah. It's a weakness that I'm hoping will become a strength in the near future. Okay. Uh, the second weakness was brought to mind because of one of the questions from Ask Me Anything. Oh, okay. I think a weakness we have is supporting and encouraging single people. You know, I hadn't... Th- that's so true. Yes. All ages. Yep. Younger, yep. Old, like... I know a lot of churches have or have had a single to ministry, including Arcade. Arcade like, there yeah. was a thriving, thriving single one. ministry back in the day. Um, but at this point in time, we don't. And I think a lot of churches tend to focus on fa- focus on the family. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to make I, you spit your water out. My water out. <laughs> but it's it's the core group, not mm-hmm. the core. Not core is important, but core is a uh, majority. Yeah, right. Right, And so we don't want any group to feel marginalized or less than or not a valuable part of our church yeah. family. And yeah. so I think I think single people in our church, whether widowed, never married, divorced, whatever, um, like we could do more for them. Yeah, yeah. I think I, that's good. That's good. Um, th- is this the second one, the third yep, one? the second well, it's actually the third because I agreed with the memories one. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, let the record reflect that I agreed with Beth Whitney on something. I think what he meant to say was, you're right. I didn't say that. Uh, the third uh, weakness, cr- crowded calendar. You know, I, I just, you know, we, we emphasize families. Mm-hmm. We emphasize participation at home. We emphasize... Sabbath, having a Sabbath rest. And I think that sometimes arcade and really any church can be, can fall at the feet of the idol of busyness, yeah. is we don't know how to stop. Mm-hmm. And it takes a lot of work to rest. It does. It takes a lot of effort. You have effort to prepare to, to rest. <laughs> you have to prepare, absolutely. Um, and and so I think what can happen is we have so many viable and wonderful ministries. I, I wouldn't even know what to stop. Mm-mm. But so many viable ministries and Bible studies and, and get-togethers for men, for women, for young people, for older saints, all that stuff, are, are we... I'm continually asking the question, are we simply being... Um, are we in the same current as our culture is that you're not, you're not worth it unless you're busy? And... And that's a concern for me. I don't know what the solution for that mm-hmm. is, but I think it's a weakness that, that every church I've ever served in, mm-hmm. including Arcade, but every other church that I know of mm-hmm. is happening. Because we do yeah. want to have things. For example, you just, right. we want to have something for single people. Right. We do. Uh, it, it starts with leadership. Right. And, but but, but then there's to, another thing on the calendar. Another thing. Right. And, hmm. uh, and so is there a way to more organically manufacture... Fellowship, I know organic and manufacturing don't go together, but <laughs> is there a, a way to organically manufacture fellowship uh, to the point where the calendar is is eased up a little bit yeah. and relaxed? Hmm. So Good. Um, okay, so uh, Ephesians 4 talks about these ascension gifts, yeah. apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, teacher. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of teachers and shepherds. Yeah. Um, we don't have a lot of prophets and apostles. Or maybe we do... It's just they easy just to slot people into teacher shepherd mm-hmm. yeah. roles, right? You lead a gather group or you lead an adult Bible fellowship or you teach Sunday school or mm-hmm. you become a pastor or whatever, yeah. right? Teacher shepherd, easy, easy, easy. Apostles and prophets can be a little odd, speaking for myself. What? We have crazy ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to rock the boat. hmm for Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. sometimes for ourselves, but hopefully for the Lord. Um, and there's not always a tidy place yeah. for an apostle or a prophet. Yeah. And so I think that that we're working on that, but mm-hmm. I think we're still in the weakness category. Well, and that was one of mine too. Is <gasps> why do you steal all mine? Well, because you're smart. Um, I, the way I put it is clearly defined pathway for disciple making. Mm. For an example, ascension gifts. Yeah, I think I think that there's there's something there, that, and we've talked about this on on behold. In fact, mm-hmm. there's something between equipping the saints and the ascension gifts. Mm-hmm. There's a disconnect that the American church has yeah. that the global church 
doesn't have. Right. And guess what? The global church is exploding. I mean, I could tell you stories just about Jim and Annie Cole. Oh, Iglesias right. Iglesias yeah. Loesley. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so there's a connection between the ascension gifts and equipping the saints that we have yet to tap into. Right. But, but by God's grace, we're moving that direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think it, it is a weakness yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, is this number five? I still have two more. No. You've done like four, haven't you? No. I did Looking Back, Singles, and then Teacher Shepherd. Okay. All right. So number four for me is the good old 80-20. Oh, yeah. Which okay. if you've been around churches yeah. long enough, you yeah. know 80% of the work is done by 20% yeah. of the people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just got an amen from Pastor Chris over yeah. there on the yeah. corner. Yeah. Um, we have amazing servants. We do. They and, flinch to yes. And we always. have a lot of people who come to church and go home. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I know that's the, that's a lot of churches. I guess my challenge is what are you good at? What do you like? Mm-hmm. What needs to be done? How can you help? Yeah, right? yeah. Those are great questions that you've brought to us mm-hmm. um, as a congregation of staff. What needs to be done? How can I help? Maybe you're great at landscaping. Yeah. Call, our, call our plant and properties guy. Maybe you're great. Uh, we have a library. Yeah. Serving, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to go down the list, but there's so many ways to get involved and use the way God has gifted you for the body mm-hmm. of Christ. So. And you, to go along with that, because again, one of mine, but if, you, if you're convicted by that and you attend Arcade Church, then you can email us at behold at arcadechurch.com, and we'd be more than happy to channel you to the right person yeah. if you're not aware of what there is to do. Uh, but yeah, I agree. I mean, we've, we've, the people who serve, they serve without complaint. They mm-hmm. serve with a smile, with great joy. And you know what? They're the ones that have this viable, vibrant relationship with Jesus. And, but the problem is especially the last few years, really probably since COVID, Mm -hmm. is we have... um, Arcade has become a place to heal. Yes. And and so we've had had all kinds of people visit and become part of Arcade because of trauma that's happened to them, Mm -hmm. uh, could be connected to a church, Mm -hmm. could be just connected to family or life. Uh, But for whatever reason, they, they make Arcade their home and because it's a place for them to rest mm-hmm. and for them to heal. And we want them to And we do that. want them here, but also we don't want them to spend the rest of their life resting and healing. Right. There comes a point when maybe the only way that you will ever will heal is by involving yourself in some type of ministry right. or in people's lives, gather group, mm-hmm. um, women's, men's ministry, whatever that is. And I think that you'd find out that the healing process is much quicker. Yeah. when you are not isolating yourself with mm-hmm. that. But we understand, and we really want to be sensitive to that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, I have one more. Okay. Um, I think a weakness of ours is incorporating the various cultures that are a part of our church family. Yeah. Um, we have a huge Slavic population. Mm-hmm. Um, we have people from all over the world. All over the world. Right? And, and sometimes... It's easy to just do things the American way, yeah. right? And and it would be much more difficult. Like mm-hmm. it would take more time and more energy mm-hmm. and things to um, somehow incorporate these other cultures. But I think that's what heaven's going to be like, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know how we would do it or how to do it, but I think it would be amazing and beautiful. If yeah, we did. I, I agree, Beth. I mean, there was, uh, you know, years ago, there was a generation of Slavic people who came to Sacramento and because of the Ukraine, the war in Ukraine, mm-hmm. there's another, another wave. wave of Ukrainian refugees coming to Arcade. We've got Afghani refugees. Mm-hmm. We've had Arabic refugees. Yep. Um, there's a reason why I think it was Newsweek or Times said that Sacramento is the most diverse city in the nation. Yeah, and I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. And I think we. For me, it's a weakness and a strength because I think I've told you, I've never pastored African American people yeah, yeah, until yeah. I came to Arcade, yeah. and they bring a vibrancy and a culture 
that I long for, that I'm, I'm jealous of. I love that. And I've, I've learned so much about Jesus from our African-American brothers and sisters in Christ, Filipino brothers and yep. sisters, and Hispanic, um, Slavic. I mean, it, they, they do. They bring a flavor yep. to an otherwise white American middle-class church right. that enhances the gospel of Christ. Yeah. And so I would say it's a strength that we have, though. Yes. But it's also weaknesses that we need to be more that. Mm -hmm. We need to be more that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to do that. We if pray. you have ideas, yeah. Seriously. Well, I think one of the people, one person's asked, well, if you if you if you would hire staff mm -hmm. who reflected those ethnicities, we we try. Mm -hmm. That is one of the first things we do. Yep. Is we want uh, people of color on staff mm -hmm. and. Uh, people from different cultures, and so when we when we go out and hire folks, mm -hmm. we we look for that, right? And uh, it's it's difficult. Well, staff, elders, yeah. Um, yeah. people who are on the platform on Sundays, we mm -hmm. we are aware mm -hmm. of of lack of or even encouraging diversity right. there. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, but again, email us behold at archychurch dot com if you if you have an idea and you've always wanted to. What if we, mm -hmm. maybe you're an apostle and mm -hmm. you have an idea and you just don't know what to do with yeah. it, yeah. shoot it over to us. We would love to to hear you and listen yeah. and maybe process through that idea with you. Sounds good. Well, hey, that brings us to our the end. The end. Five strengths, yeah. five weaknesses. Yeah. Um, God is really working and moving in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Um, in our community at Arcade Church, we pray that He's doing the same in your community and at your church. Yeah. Do you have a behold for us? I have a behold. Great. And it's one that we've looked at before, but I think it's important. It's out of Ephesians four. Mm -hmm. I know that if you're Arcadian, um, man, what's the thing with Ephesians four? Well, then you should read it. Ephesians it, is my favorite book in the Bible. By the way, it's a powerful, powerful book. <laughs> But we've been talking about the Ascension gifts. We've been talking about equipping people um, with the gospel of Christ. Um, and, and Ephesians 4 is so powerful because in Ephesians 3, as well as in Ephesians 4, the Apostle Paul is talking about the fullness of Christ. And that is his prayer. His prayer for the church is the fullness of Christ. Our prayer for uh, Arcade Church and the Church of Sacramento mm -hmm is the fullness of Christ, because when the fullness of Christ is on display, lives are transformed, revival happens. And so he is continually talking about this fullness of Christ in Ephesians chapter 3 and chapter 4. I encourage you, at, when you sign off here, is to read those two chapters, mm -hmm. and you'll see that where, where Paul is obsessed almost yeah. with that. And if there's one thing to be obsessed with, it is that. that that's our desire for Arcade. It's our desire for your church if you go someplace else. If it's in the Sacramento region, we'd love to know where you go. You need to stay there yes. and, and blossom and bloom there and be who you are there to bless those folks. But we'd love to hear where you're from uh, and who else listening. Um, but I think Ephesians 3 and 4 is so powerful mm -hmm. for, for that. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, hey... Um this isn't me tooting my own horn, but a couple years ago, Cole Harper and I wrote a short catechism called Brick by Brick. We are out of the physical copies, but if you've been listening to the first few epi episodes of the podcast... Um, like season one, season right? Season one, yeah, yeah. it was Cole and I. You can get a, a digital download of this. There's just click the link, fill out the form. I think it's just your email address. And mm -hmm. then we'll send you a digital copy. It is a great tool for parents with children to just go through that. It's meant to go through on a daily basis if you can. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. it, it just, it's an incredible work. It was such a fun project to yeah. work on. Well, Cole's, Cole's a great he's partner. such a depressing person to be around, <laughs> isn't he? You and know? and like not very smart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Cole's like the smartest person I know. He is. No offense to you yeah. or no, anyone no, else he, in the No, no, he room, is the smartest guy in every room he he's walks in. He's very smart. And you'd never know it, though, no, because he's, he's so humble. He is a yeah, kind man. Yeah, yeah. Um, so go ahead and get your copy of that. Uh, but in the meantime, share this podcast mm -hmm. um, on social media, text it to a friend, like it. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, we'd love a review from you. Um, submit questions to us. 
uh, behold at arcadechurch.com. We would love to dialogue with you. And um, if you totally disagree with us, I'll give you Craig's email address and you can email. Just kidding. I won't do that. You can disagree with us. Please disagree with us. Yes. Mm-hmm. Kindly. Yeah. Because Gently. <laughs> well, in, in this episode, your strengths and weaknesses may be totally different. We'd love to hear right. what they yeah. are. Yeah. We'd love For to sure. hear what they are. Yeah. Yep. Well, until next time, keep beholding Jesus. Mm-hmm. Keep pursuing him. Stay active in your church. Read the word. Love your neighbors. That's all I got. We'll see you That's next enough. time. All right. See ya. <laughs> Bye.